Hey there everybody, welcome to week 7. In another couple hours I start my 7th dose of ketamine. So last night I didn't sleep so well so I'm in a very grumpy, agitated mood today. I woke up several times throughout the night, restless legs, achy shoulders, just uh, it was a whole whirlwind of uh, things working against me last night. But I did get up and I did snow blow the driveway in the backyard, so I did something productive today. So that's a positive. But overall, I gotta say, I find there's no real stability in how I'm feeling when it comes to the treatments. It's like it's all fluctuated, it goes up and down. <clears throat> I kind of look at it at different. Uh, like different stations, different dials. You got a radio, and each dial adjusts. Like one adjusts the treble, one adjusts the bass, one adjusts the volume. And you got one of those knobs for different emotions that you might have, like one for anger, one for depression, one for anxiety. And all these knobs are they're cranked up, but they're at just different levels. And when they're cranked up, and if you make a small adjustment down, it's it's hard to notice that difference so that's what I'm thinking is going on is everything else is so peak and because of that uh, the small changes or the subtle changes in my uh, in my condition I guess aren't as noticeable does that make sense it kind of does to me but of course that's me <laughs> snow is all cleared for another day Hopefully that's it for the winter. Because I do not want more snow. Well, it is now 11 a.m. Well, 10.57. That means I got 30 minutes to get something to eat. See if I can do it. Well, eggs it is. Eggs and toast. That's what my plan is this morning. I always like to keep it simple. Well, if you look at the clock, I've got about 15 minutes left. Not too bad, cook breakfast in less than 15 minutes. Well, thanks for joining me as I cooked my breakfast. I'm gonna go and eat in quiet now, so I don't want you staring at me. So I feel almost like I hit a wall right now. I don't wanna go for treatments today. It's the last thing I want to do. I just not in the mood. Don't want to face it. 
don't want to deal with it, don't want to call a cab, don't want to get a cab ride. It's like all these things are just hitting at once and uh, it's, uh, it's a bit agitating and frustrating. I feel stuck, I feel trapped. And uh, yeah, I guess it's just the apprehensions I'm having about the treatments and they make me wonder, is this going to be worth it? Because right now, at this very moment, this, this specific second in time, like I'm, I'm concerned. Waiting for the taxi to come and the plow came by, of course. So, it's been a few minutes clearing snow. Okay, I won't whine about it, I know. Well, I made it. Cab ride was fine, but uh, got a lot of anxiety this time over this session for some reason. You'd think uh, after having a few sessions already, it wouldn't, but that's it. Can't control what the body does. Maybe this time I will actually accept the offer of Ativan, because they do offer that before each session to help calm down a bit. Yay, paperwork. Blood pressure is good again. Had my first dose in each nostril. Gonna hold off to get those Tic Tacs though. Well, those two second doses actually burned a bit. So I guess it's time for Tic Tacs. The vase looks lazy. Well, that last session wasn't too bad. Instead of uh, listening to music, I ended up uh, using my mindfulness app and I was sitting inside a log cabin during a snowstorm, listening to the fire crackling and a cat purring in somewhere in the house. So that was uh, my experience for the last hour. It was nice. That looks like my ride, I'd say. Six centimeters we got this eh? Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> Well, usually when I get home from these appointments, I feel fairly relaxed, but today I'm, uh, I'm restless, I'm agitated, just, uh, just can't get comfortable in my own mind, my own skin today for some reason. So that's one of the main reasons I decided to come out in my shed for a bit, because when I'm irritated and agitated and restless and in my moods, the last thing I really need is to be around my family. So I come out here to hide. It's a, it's a win-win, I think. Uh, they don't have to witness me being a grumpy bastard and I don't have to uh, impose my discontent on them. The worst part is some of the things that annoy me are are positive things. They're good things. For example, my son is down with the uh, vacuum cleaner cleaning up the basement. I mean, why would I be upset over that? I'm happy he's doing it. I'm proud he's independent and responsible enough to do it. But yet, the noise of that vacuum cleaner 
drives me insane. And it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a constant battle. It's a constant struggle. And I feel like my whole family's got to walk on eggshells around me. And, uh, and I don't like that. And I'm sure they don't either. God, I'm starting to feel like this shed has become like a confession booth or something. Yeah, it's hard. It's, uh, it absolutely sucks knowing that the people you care about, people that are the most important to you are just inside, just, just over there in that house. And they're there, content as can be, carrying out their daily activities, yet I feel like I'm, like I don't belong. It's like I don't fit. It's like the, the square peg, round hole kind of a deal. And uh, that's something I've been struggling with for many, many years, actually, is, is whether or not I deserve them. And that's that's a struggle. That's something that uh, that I really need to unpack because they're with me. Obviously, they care and love me, but I can't help but feeling like it's I'm undeserving of it. Yeah, that curse of depression takes a toll on you, doesn't it? It takes away and picks away, and just like all the good that there is, it just chips away at it and destroys it, and just turns into this pile of crap at your feet. Well, let's at least hope that this ketamine treatment can knock away or clean up some of that crap that's at my feet. That's my hope. Just clean up a bit of it, a smudge of it, a smidge of it. I don't care about the stains. Just help clean up some of that mess. Well, after a few minutes of sitting out here and venting to my phone, <laughs> to my camera, or to you guys, to my imaginary fans, after a few minutes of just doing this, sitting here, just talking it out verbally, uh, just verbalizing the th my thoughts and recording them, I feel a little bit better already. So... Uh, Sorry for those uh, few comments there just before this, but hey, they made me feel better, so that's what counts. So now maybe I'll vent a bit more to you. Who knows? Don't eat yellow snow. Did I ever mention that I love having fires? It's one of my favorite things to do. It's so peaceful and relaxing. Yeah, this is one of those nights when there's nothing on TV to watch, nothing to read, nothing to keep my mind busy. So this works between keeping it going and putting twigs on it. Keeps you distracted. Good morning. 
Welcome to Wednesday. Another night has passed. Another morning has passed. I slept pretty good, although I don't feel like it today. I know I slept well, except for, well, I got up twice in the night and a uh, bit of restless legs again, but I slept better than I did the night before, which is good. But I'm still very angry and irritable and just agitated and cranky and grumpy. Maybe it's just getting old, I don't know. But, uh, but these are all the moods that, that tend to be a bit overwhelming right now. And uh, although I'm feeling a little bit better because about a half an hour ago I did uh, some uh, meditation for about 20 minutes and uh, I find that always... Not always, but when I'm in the right mindset to engage in meditation properly, I find that it, uh, it has a pretty positive impact on me. It gives me that little break from the noise, if you know what I mean. So now that I have my meditation out of the way and I'm feeling a little bit better, a little bit motivated, I'm going to go take my dog for a stroll. That's my goal today. I haven't walked him in two days. My wife has been home, but uh, now it's my turn. I think we're going to go for a drive first and figure out a place to go, maybe somewhere where there's a dog park so he can socialize a little while I watch from the sidelines. So I'll see you in a bit. Walk. Okay. Yes, we're going to go. We're going to go. Are you excited? Are you excited? I think you're excited. Okay. I think you're excited. All right, we'll go. What's up, Rex? What are you doing, Rex? Hey, where are we going? We're gonna go for a drive? Hey, what do you think? We're gonna go for a drive? Stay over there on your side. All right, where are we gonna go? All right, let's see. Would you like to go to the dog park? What do you think? We'll go to the dog park. Lots of smells for you. This is like a mindfulness session. You're out. Surrounded by trees and nature. It does the world, it does a world of good. At least it does for me, and I'm pretty sure it does for most people. You made it home, Rex. Hey, back to your backyard. So now I have to decide whether I'm going to try to read again or maybe try to put a video together. One or the other. There's not many other options in my brain right now. What you doing? Licking the snow. So that last medicating session I had was productive. I managed to get about an hour of editing done, which was good. I got a video put together. Now I'm going to try a new kind and uh, hopefully this will help me read a little. That's my plan is to read some of my Stephen King book called Fairy Tale.
Well, that didn't go as expected. I was supposed to stay on the chair. There, stay. Come on, baby, warm up. I'm in a mood, so I could be here a while. Yeah. So I did manage to get some reading done, and uh, I even got inspired to start cleaning a little. I started doing some house cleaning. And then things go downhill. The boy comes home from school. Hey, how was your day? And your day is fine. But every light in his car is glowing, and uh, it's probably going to be another big expense getting his car fixed again. And it's, uh, it's getting frustrating. I feel like that's all I've been doing the last three weeks is driving back and forth to a garage. So do you have a problem with indecisiveness? It's, uh, it's something I struggle with. The simplest little tasks, like cooking supper, for example. I, it, it causes me pain trying to decide what to cook for supper some days. And that's just a simple example, but it's, uh, it's like that with everything. It could be trying to figure out whether I want one brand of coffee versus another for my first cup of coffee in the morning. I could be there weighing the pros and cons, analyzing, doing some kind of cost benefit analysis of it. I don't know, it's crazy. The biggest issue is not so much making the decision on what to have. It's coming up with options or alternatives or ideas. It's like for the last four months, it's like my brain can't come up with an idea on its own. And it's uh, very frustrating because I used to be big into writing. I write a lot of poetry and every day I'd write these long daily journal entries and uh, it was what I did. And now I can't even think of words to put the paper, like what will I write about? And you could tell me, you can give me a prompt if you want, but it's probably not going to work. It's, uh, it's very frustrating uh, when it's one of the things that you really count on because writing is my outlet. It's one of my big outlets. Getting things off my chest is, uh, it's so important to me. And when I can't write, it's like I'm suffocating and it's, but I can't come up with thoughts. I don't know what to write about. It's, it's, it's an ordeal. Am I whining? I sound, I feel like I'm whining to myself here. Like, uh, like I'm just kind of just going on and on about these stupid things that are just petty and uh, not even worth my breath, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's worth the breath to me because it's a problem for me. And if it annoys you <laughs> or you think it's me whining, well, obviously you haven't experienced what I'm experiencing. Because if you did, you'd probably be thinking a little differently. You maybe have a little bit more compassion or empathy for me. Not that I'm asking for that or looking for that. Anyway, I'm blabbing now. So now I'm going out of it too much. I'll pause here. Another therapy session in the books. Good morning, everybody. Made it through another night again. Had a few cold sweats last night and uh, it's one of those things you're bundled up and you're freezing to death because you're sweating but you can't let the air in because it makes you even colder so you kind of got to just bear with it and just uh, savor and embrace the sweat so today is my eighth session and I can't wait for these to be done now I'm at that point I after this one it's not so bad I'm down to one a week then Every Thursday I'll have my uh, ketamine session 
and they'll be increasing the dose the next time not today but the next time I go so there's that to look forward to I but yeah I'm I'm at the point where I'm done I uh, I don't know if the benefits are there for me or not and uh, it's uh, like I know the potential is there, but it's all this in between crap that's uh, that's just getting to me and eating me right up. I'm pretty sure that all of that in between stuff is is all in my head. I know it because my head is my problem. It's been my problem for a while, and I say that because today, for example, my appointment is at 1:30. So I don't need to be ready for my cab drive until 1 p.m. And depending on what time I get up, that leaves me with four or five hours of time that I could be doing something that's fun, constructive, creative, or whatever it might be. But yet I can't bring myself to do anything, anything whatsoever because I have that appointment at 1.30 and that timeline of 1 p.m. that I must meet. And because I must meet that, that's, I, I don't want to risk doing other things and missing out, or I just, my brain just can't even function on other things. It's like I got that one appointment, that's all my brain can function on. It's all it's capable of handling. <clears throat> it's all it's capable of processing at one point. Uh, you throw in another appointment today and I would probably just crumble in and just crash and just curl up on the couch and just stay there. And it's like that with everything, with every appointment or task or chore or whatever it is. I, I, I can only pick one and, and even then it's a struggle. But anyway, despite all of that, I'm still going to show up to my next appointment because... That's what I do. I have a fear of missing appointments. It's, uh, it's, it's embedded in me. It's probably from my military career where every single thing you screw up on, there's a consequence for. And that doesn't leave you. That's, uh, that's just drilled right in your psyche. That's it. That's part of me now. I fear running late. I fear authorities. I fear so many things right now because of my military service that I could take this camera and smash it. That's how frustrating it gets. <clears throat> anyway, I'm starting to get a little bit too agitated on camera right now. So I'm gonna take off. I got about an hour or so before my taxi drive. So I'm gonna go do some deep breathing exercises because I'd sooner do that than punch this camera. So after that grumpy bout I just had, I went and meditated for 15 minutes. I did a form of meditation called Metta. It's basically where you visualize somebody and you wish them the best. You wish, give them, mentally you wish them the best. You hope they are successful. You hope they are, their suffering is minimal. It's, you basically, basically it's the love and kindness is what they call it. So that's what I did for 15 minutes or so, as I just reflected, I pictured somebody, I imagined them, and I truly wished them the absolute best in their day, in their life. And uh, doing that, it actually works. Uh, it's, uh, it's weird. Now, if only I can learn to turn that and switch it to myself and be kind to myself, because I struggle with that. Speaking of myself, I uh, I notice I definitely need to get uh, get some grooming going on here. My I've been neglecting myself lately. A little something to break up the monotony. I have a package. I wonder what it could be. Perfect. That is my. What is it, Rex? You gotta test it out for me. That is my cannabis. My indica oils are in there for nighttime so I can sleep. Well, there's my ride. Time to go. Get 
Well, I made it. It was a long cab ride. I think he took me for a little tour of St. John's before we got here. Oh well, no big deal. The cab driver had some kind of Punjabi music going. So I got my Foo Fighters going now, ready to go in and get my next session done. Here we go, trying to wean the Punjabi stuff out of my head. Second dose is in, so now I just get to relax and listen to my nature sounds. I'm grumpy right now, but uh, hopefully this will change. But at least I got Tic Tacs, right? I hope they're not leftovers. This is my view for an hour. But my eyes are usually closed, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, that's another one done and in the books. I gotta say, um, <clears throat> the session itself was okay. I was able to uh, listen to my headphones. I had my earbuds in listening to nature sounds and I was able to visualize myself in nice scenic locations around Newfoundland, around the East Coast Trail and that. But this time, once the session was over, once I got home, it's like the effects wore off very, very quickly this time. And, and I'm right back in my angry, agitated, depressed, pissed off. Like it's, I'm overwhelmed with emotions here right now. And it's, uh, it's discouraging to, to say the least. It's days like this that suicidal thoughts are more prevalent than others. It's like today I just, I'm tired and I want this shit to end and nothing is working. So what do you do, right? I mean, that's fucking miserable being like this. I just came in from outside, had to go out and medicate. I, I'm feeling a little bit better now. Sorry for that outburst earlier. Plus, my dog is with me now. He'll comfort me.
yeah, I just screwed up. I was putting the uh, lid back on the uh, margarine and it slid across the stove and got stuck on the burner. You can see, you can see the white stains from the uh, plastic just burning and melting on there. Oh, crap. But at least my breakfast looks good. One little squirt of salt on each. <clears throat> That's all I need, just enough to add a slight bit of flavor. Well, I slept a little better last night. Not great, but better. Now, I'll take it. Now, as for my mood, I'm still in, in the slumps, and I'm wondering if doing these videos, being making myself hyper-focused on how I'm feeling so I can express myself and talk about my issues, like, I'm wondering if that's having a negative impact. I mean, that's all I do is think about how I'm feeling, okay, am I feeling good now? What's causing me to feel this way? It's like a constant internal analysis going on so I'm wondering if that in itself is uh, is proving to be detrimental well I think it's time for the ketamine diaries to come to an end I mean how long are they gonna go on for right I've been at this uh, for a month and I've, this is my fourth week this video is and uh, and I'm trying to figure out to what end, to what purpose, uh, continuing to make these videos would serve. And I don't know if they are that beneficial at this point. Because, as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, it's forcing me to look inward constantly. And when I'm looking inward, I'm not looking outward. And I need to be looking outward as well. If that makes sense, <laughs> it probably doesn't. It does to me, in a way. So anyway, I think I'm going to call it quits after this one. I think this is going to be my sign-off for the ketamine portion anyway. And hopefully that means I can get back to doing my little random outings a couple times a week and uh, capture some nice scenery. And of course, throw in a few poems here and there, which is what my channel is about. It's about nature, it's about scenery, it's about poetry, it's about just finding ways to deal with PTSD and get through it on a daily basis. And it's an outlet for me. So more than anything, this whole video making process is an outlet. So on that note, I am going to sign off, but you will see me again. Just uh, nothing about ketamine, that's all because I don't really think I'm giving it the uh, proper uh, analysis as, that, as, as I should be. And I'm worried that by saying the things I'm saying that I'm going to deter somebody or encourage somebody when they may or may not should be doing it. <laughs> I'm mumbling again now. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm gone. Until next time, take care of yourselves. And uh, thanks for all your support up to this point. And I will see you again.